sings. Good night. I hope everyone's well. Well, welcome to Womb Wednesdays. Uh, I'm Ramona Riley, the Vagina Lady. And of course, as you guys know, every Wednesday we come on and we talk about something. Something, usually reproductive, but we always discuss something. So today is no different. We will be discussing. Uh, now, this month has been all about endometriosis. It's March. March is an endometriosis month. Um, so it's all about the yellow and um, it's all about putting out that education out there. So it's time to put the information out there. Um, I would like to pray, start by prayer, with prayer I should say, and then I am going to get all into this, okay? Uh, you can bow your heads or do what you'd usually do for prayer, and I'll lead. Dear God, we all come to you right now just thankful for our health and our strength. We ask you for protection. We ask you for healthy immune systems at this time. And we just ask you to allow us to just release or absorb the things that we need to, to be the best versions of ourselves. Every day we wake up striving to be a better person. We ask you to allow us to, or guide us in that path. We thank you. Amen. Alrighty, so fertility and endometriosis. It's so sad because a lot of women don't even realize that they are an endo warrior, an endo sister, usually until it's time for them to have a baby or to become pregnant. Um, they're now married uh, and it's not happening. Uh, they know they have endo or they don't know they have endo and they're wondering why it's not happening. Most reproductive issues that have to do with hormones will cause um, infertility in some manner. So endometriosis is not very different, but it's much, much, much harder when you suffer from endometriosis. So I want to talk about different ways, different things that we can help uh, so that a woman who does have endometriosis, who is dying to have a child, can try these different tips um, so that their goal can be achieved. So the first thing that I want to talk about, which usually is the first thing I talk about when it comes to any reproductive issue, and it's your gut. Your gut, your gut, your gut. Your digestive system plays a huge, huge part in your endo. Your digestive system is the beginning of your endo. So if we're going to go to a fertility aspect or attack the fertility part of it or enhance it or stimulate it or whatever word it is that you want to use, that means that we're going to have to heal the gut. Cleanse it, balance it, heal it. In cleansing and balancing the gut, guess what happens? All of a sudden, the reproductive system can move, function a little better, a little better. Why? Because the digestive system is functioning properly. It's not full of toxins. It's not full of waste. You're going to the bathroom on a regular basis. 
because a lot of women who suffer from endometriosis have issues in the bathroom. They suffer from constipation a lot uh, unless it is that they're having their period. For some, they have constipation during the period. But the digestive system is where it all begins. So that is where we have to start when it comes to healing or eating um, fertility. So how can we like heal and balance the gut? Of course, the foods that we eat. The foods that we eat definitely help us to be able to heal the gut, um, or if you want me to say digestive system, at a quicker rate. So foods like chicken, beef, and oxtail is beef, guys. Uh, dairy, soy. Now, some of these things, gluten, some of these things that I have mentioned, actually, some of the reason why it's not good is because it has a lot of estrogen in it. And we all know that endo is a high estrogen condition. So we don't want to be eating things that already have estrogen, especially the fake version of estrogen, to put it into our bodies. So making sure that dairy... Beef, pork, soy, gluten, and even the fake sugars are removed. And when I say fake sugars, I also mean the brown sugar, the cane juice sugar. I also mean that as well, okay? Um, if, it's, if it's pressed cane juice, that's a different thing. But if it's the cane, if it's the actual crystals, then that's an issue, okay? Because it goes through a whole other process again and you have to put things in it so that it can keep and it doesn't spoil and all manners of things, okay? Those things, if we do not put them in our bodies, you will find that our endo symptoms can become just a little better, if not a lot better. Moving away from the digestive system, we get into the next topic or the next... The next bulletin which would be your hormones it's an estrogen driven thing it's a hormonal thing it's hormones right so we got to balance them we got to bring down the estrogen we probably need to raise the progesterone a little bit we got to balance it out because a lack of the balance is what is going to make the endo worse and the worse the endo is is the harder it will be to get pregnant so it's very important for us to balance the hormones how can we balance the hormones what's one of the things that we can do to balance the hormones other than the foods that we're eating or not eating we can balance the hormones by using herbs very great way using vitamins minerals these things are natural, easy ways to balance the hormones. We can also do different treatments and that type of thing to balance the hormones. And I'm going to go into the treatments after. I just want to kind of give you a rundown of everything first. So balancing the hormones are important. And in doing that, how we can do that is using different types of herbs. Something like red clover. Red clover is great for that. I mean, absolutely great. Uh, Vitex. Vitex is also very good. It helps to balance the hormones a lot. We can also use essential oils. Essential oils being things like clary sage, uh, basil, thyme. Very good. Those things are also very good for fertility also. So, you know, you can look into that. Uh, what else would I say? Those are probably the easiest, most common ones uh, in terms of balancing the hormones. Liang Liang is also a good one. Geranium is good as well. So there are a lot of different essential oils that can help with balancing the hormones. And when we would use essential oils, we would use it like in the bottom of our feet, uh, palms of our hands, soak our nails in it when we go to the nail salon. Same thing with our feet, rub it along our spine, inhale it. Uh, those, those are really great ways, okay, for topical purposes. So, apart from the gut, we start with the gut, and then we go into the hormones itself. From there, 
the uterus is what I would say is what we would want to tackle next. The uterus and the lining of the uterus is half the majority of the reason of why endo sucks, right? Because the lining is a hot mess. So making sure that we create a proper lining, like a really proper lining for the uterus is going to be extremely important. How do we create a proper lining? Well, of course, hormones are a huge way. Hormones are going to allow when it is created to not shed too much. Clots and that type of thing. So that's one instance. Another thing uh, is what we can do. Another thing that we can use is red raspberry. Red raspberry is very good for the uterine lining. It's very good for the uterus in general, okay? So if you suffer from endo, worse, you're trying to get pregnant, red raspberry should definitely be your friend. You should live on that. Live on it. Sorrel, I would also recommend as well. Sorrel is great. Please sweeten it properly. But I would also suggest sorrel. Sorrel is great. You can have it hot as a tea or you can have it cold as a drink. And the same thing with the red raspberry. Okay. Red raspberry does not have a bad or harsh taste. So no sugar. I don't care how healthy the sugar is. No sugar. For something like sorrel that has like more of that bitter. Like it's just, it's very strong taste. Then like a natural sweetener for that. Okay. So we've cleansed, we've cleaned up the gut. We've started to balance the hormones. We're now healing the uterus and the lining of the uterus and all that good stuff. But guess what happens a lot of times with endo? The lining starts to connect to other parts in the reproductive system. So now the tubes are now connected to the, the, the uterus because through scar tissue, what are we going to do? We got to do something about that because if the tubes are affected, then fertility is definitely going to be affected. So we have to make sure that we try to remove as much scar tissue because that's kind of pretty much what it is. As much scar tissue as we can away from the tubes. I mean, we want to remove it from everywhere, but the tubes are very delicate and scar tissue can be a hot. So we want to make sure that we remove the scar tissue. We're gonna soften the scar tissue, remove the scar tissue. How do we do that? Usually, ginger, is a great way to soften the scar tissue, okay? It's also great for the digestive system. It's also great for the circulatory system. It's great for the lymphatic system. It's great for every system, nerves, everything, okay? So ginger is something that I would want you to be on, okay? Mix your ginger with your red raspberry in the morning. No sugar, no sweetener. And not the packet ginger guys, please. Okay, like the actual one, like the root one that you have to wash off and you have to peel and you have to cut up that one. Yeah, that one. That's the one that you use. The tubes need the healing and the cleansing and the 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 the, the softening of the tissue, and the ginger is definitely going to do that. The def the, the ginger gives it that. Okay. So I would love you to use ginger daily. Cook with it. I made ginger shrimp the other day. Like, do something. Ginger chicken, ginger shrimp, ginger fish, ginger something, ginger suck on a ginger, bite a ginger, chew a ginger. You cannot overdose on ginger. If you find that you are having like a lot of loose boils, then okay, maybe you're having a little too much. But other than that, 
I definitely suggest the ginger. So moving away from the tubes, I want to talk a little bit about the depression because the things that we've gone through already in terms of, okay, so this woman knows that her gut's messed up. This woman knows that her uterine lining is a hot mess. This woman knows that, you know, her, her, her tubes could be at risk. Her hormones are unbalanced. The pain she's feeling is overwhelming. What do you think happens to that woman? Like hair and hair. What happens to her? She dies slowly. She slowly dies. And as she slowly dies, she still has to survive. It's like the fucking craziest thing in the world. Like how, does, how the fuck does that happen? So depression is real for a woman who has endo. And then this woman is 40, 30, 34, and trying to get pregnant and can't get pregnant. The depression is real. So there are a lot of high school who suffer from endometriosis because they can't take it anymore. And all they want to do is stop the fucking pain. That's all. Can the pain stop? And the pain is not even in just one place. The pain is throughout the entire body, inside, outside, everywhere. So the depression is going to affect her. It's going to affect the way she deals with her spouse, her boyfriend, her family, her friends, herself. Because guys, self is everything. Self is first. She will not deal with self. She will hate self. She will kill self. So when we talk about depression, what can we do? What can we do for depression? I mean, number one, seeing a psychiatrist, a, a psychologist, anything like that is also a good idea. Always a great idea. Um, I see a psychologist. My children are like, mom, black people don't go, don't go to therapy. I was like, what the hell? Who says that? Where did you guys get that from? Um, so that's got to change. Got to change their minds. Um, but and I, and I don't suffer from endometriosis. I don't suffer from reproductive issues. I don't have issues about that kind of thing. Yet still, I'm going to therapy for things that might seem minuscule compared to a woman who is suffering from endometriosis. So I definitely suggest therapy in some way, in some fashion. Seeing someone that can help you and tell you different ways and how you can release and how you can build on self-esteem and love and acceptance as well. Another thing... Uh, that I would recommend as well is sound therapy and color therapy. Sound therapy and color therapy are great for helping to, I mean, you can use sound therapy and color therapy to even balance your hormones. Okay. Um, but using it for depression, um, and anxiety is, is really, really, really important. So I would definitely suggest that as well. And I mean, you can go on YouTube and do that. That's, that's free. That's free. Um, anyone who's interested in any sound therapy uh, or call, please DM us uh, or you can uh, send us a WhatsApp message or you can email us at cosmicwoman at gmail.com so that we can send you that information. Okay, the information is free. No one should have to pay for it. Um, and you will definitely see a difference in yourself, feel a difference. Uh, it's amazing. It's really wonderful. Uh, no, if you, if you, if you suffered from depression like before, or you maybe ha you suffer from depression from a different standpoint, then what I would also suggest maybe if you're interested, you could DM us about, um, our antidepressant, uh, herbal tea blend that we do. 
uh, it is actually not available in Jamaica right now, but it is available um, for everyone else. So you can DM us about that if that if that's something you're interested in. And if you're in Jamaica and you're interested in, in it, you can also DM us um, and we can probably put you on a list or something. And when it comes in, we can definitely give you a call. I would say that those two things, seeing a therapist, using sound therapy and color therapy, do will do wonders on top of vitamins and minerals. If you suffer from endo, you have to be on a multi, a female multivitamin, plant-based. You have to. Because a lot of times the reasons why our hormones are all over the place are deficiencies. They're deficient. We don't have enough iron. We don't have enough magnesium. We don't have enough, enough all, all these the vitamin B12, B6, all these things. So making sure that we get that in us as well is important. That is going to help us not only with our hormones, be productive, not only with the digestive, but it's going to help us with our mind. It's going to help our meds. It's going to help the depression, the sadness. Though I'm trying to get up every day and just survive. Who the fuck wants to just get up and just survive? No one. So with this information, I urge you guys, please, if you're suffering, take these steps. They make a difference. If it didn't make a difference, I would not be here on your live tonight at, I don't know what part of the country all of you guys are in, but it's after nine here uh, in Jamaica, and I would not be. Trust me. Probably drinking some wine or something. Moving on. Now... With treatments, right? Because we've spoken a lot about like, you know, the how we would treat each organ um, and the organs that we focus on when it comes to not just endo, but fertility. I want to talk a little bit about the treatments that you can use. So, massage is one of the best things that a woman with endo can do self-massage and getting massages focusing on the abdomen the pelvis the thigh the back especially the mid to lower back we endo sometimes because there's a lot of blockage there's a lot of fluid or scar tissue or something just that's just pasted up pasted up somewhere so Doing massage really helps to remove the blockage if it's fluid and there's some buildup or soften the scar tissue if there's scar tissue there. So I would definitely suggest massage, 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 massage. Okay. You can even start massaging just yourself if you can't afford to go and do a massage all the time. Okay. You get some coconut oil, some um, almond oil. Grapeseed oil, you can even use olive oil. And I mean, if you have Cosmic Woman's hormonal oil blend, definitely use that, okay? And you are going to just rub and massage and just love up the area, okay? If you want to put a little pressure, you can. If you don't want to put pressure because you're already in pain, that's fine. But I don't want you to do these massages just when you're in pain. I want you to do it throughout the day, throughout the day. Okay, and when I say that, I mean maybe every morning and every night. You know, or, you know, while you shower or something like that. I would prefer if you were sitting down or lying down while you do it. I think you'll be much more comfortable than standing up in the shower and necessarily doing that. But it just depends. Maybe your lifestyle, your routine, your calendar is just insane. And standing up to do it is what works because I find myself standing up and massaging my belly and stuff in the shower, me personally, because I just don't, I mean, my time is just ridiculous. Um, so I definitely recommend the massage, 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 massage. Of course, again, I'm going to recommend the castor oil treatment. Castor oil treatment is something that I always recommend no matter what reproductive issue you have. As a matter of fact, I will castor oil my children and they have no issue. More than sometimes I'm just don't listen, right? 
and yes castor oil does not help with that unfortunately but for everything else it detoxes your reproductive system, it detoxes your digestive system, it um, flushes your lymphatic system, um, it creates healthy circulation. I mean, it's just a lot of things that it does. So if it's detoxing the digestive system, of course, that's going to be good for endo. If it's detoxing the reproductive system, clearly that's going to be good for endo because that means that the hormones will become a little bit more balanced, right? It softens scar tissue, of course, that's going to be good for endo. It is good for fertility in general, so that's good. So what you would do is you would take the castor oil and you would rub it on your abdomen. You would rub it on your abdomen and you're gonna go from your belly button. You're gonna go from your belly button and you're going to go all the way down to the mound of your vagina, okay? So if my crease is here, my mound is here. So I'm gonna go from here all the way up to my belly button. I'm going to saturate the entire area, okay? The entire area I'm going to saturate. Then, I am going to use a special cotton flannel and put over the oil that's on my abdomen. And then I'm going to use a heating pad or a hot water bottle and place that on top. You can lie there for an hour, you can lie there for Two hours, I wouldn't pass two hours. If you're doing it to your children, I wouldn't pass 30 minutes. Uh, but at least an hour, I would say, is good. It's hard to get an hour in sometimes to just lie down. Um, it's, not to, it's, it's, it's more of a topical treatment than it is a oral treatment, okay? When you do the castor oil treatment, you cannot use black Jamaican castor oil. I repeat, black Jamaican castor oil. Black Jamaican castor oil is great, it's wonderful. Put it in your hair, rub it, massage it, do a hot treatment, and go underneath the heat and all kind of goodness, wonderful. But for this, for this treatment, the black castor oil has too many impurities, too much resin, too much things in it, okay? So it has to be cold pressed, virgin, organic, castor oil got it okay another treatment that I would recommend is a is the coconut oil treatment and you can do the coconut oil treatment two ways and I usually suggest to do it both ways first way is to take a tablespoon of organic virgin cold pressed um, coconut oil take a tablespoon of it and swallow it Every day, every day. For me, I find that when I put that tablespoon in my smoothie, it kind of works out a little better for me personally, okay? Everybody's different. Some people have no problem, they do it, and that's not a big deal. For me, I can do it, but I can't do it every day. It's like, ugh. So it's much easier for me to put it in my smoothie, blend it up with the fruits and the vegetables and the whatever, and it makes everything creamy and nice. So you would do that orally. The other way, or the other, the other part of the treatment is putting the coconut oil in your belly button. In your belly button. So you would lie down and you would fill your belly button up with coconut oil. You would lie there. You would let your belly button suck up the coconut oil. Okay, if you realize that the coconut oil has taken a long time to suck up, where you wake up the next morning and you're still like oil, like when you like get up, like you've seen like oil is leaking out a little bit still, that means that your digestive system wants, needs a lot of work. Okay, it's not absorbing the coconut oil the way it should. Okay, um, it's not going to be absorbed in just like 20 minutes or an hour by no means but it should not take the whole night into the morning and it's still not it's still not um absorbed from the belly button now of course this is doing a lot for your digestive system okay it's doing a lot for your digestive system and digestive system is really really important as we spoke about earlier we did talk about sound and color therapy right now we talked we spoke about sound and color therapy from the um, depression aspect 
but you can also use sound and color therapy with the actual organs in the reproductive system and the digestive system so i would say put it on before you go to bed and fall asleep to it uh, put it on in the morning um, while you stretch while you brush your teeth uh, please don't use it um, if you're operating heavy machinery uh, there are some meditations uh, that are a part of the sound and color therapy that I give out so if you're doing that of course you can't be driving and you can't be you know you need to just be still so you can also do the sound and color therapy for balancing the hormones for healing the reproductive system for healing the digestive system movement and stretching now, I mentioned the massage because, of course, we're moving and we're shifting and all of that. But movement, physical movement, with where we're moving our back and our pelvis and our legs is very important. I will be putting out a video so that you guys can get an idea of what type of exercises or what type of stretching or what type of movement is best. It won't really be exercises in terms of something that's going to make you sweat. Uh, it is just more about different techniques that you can put your body in. Uh, and I will definitely be doing it for beginners, so you guys don't have to worry. I'm not going to expect you to be doing any crazy things. Doing the movement, doing the stretching helps a lot also with the scar tissue. Endometriosis is so rough when it comes to the scar tissue situation, okay? That anything that we can do, we want to do. So moving, stretching, it will help with the pains, with the back pain, with all the blockage. Remember, there's a lot of blockage with endo. So being able to move, being able to stretch is going to help. Endometriosis, endometriosis sufferers, their leg pain, their knee pain, their back pain, their ankle pain, their abdominal pain, maybe sometimes even their eye pain. Guys, endometriosis is so fucking real. You know how many men wouldn't be able to manage that kind of pain? I mean, forget giving birth pain. Because giving birth, you shouldn't really even be feeling pain anyway. But that's another life we'll talk about. But endo pain is different. It's constant. It's like being in labor forever. Forever. You're in labor before the period. You're in labor during the period. And some women are in labor after the period. And some are, are in labor every single day. Bleeding or not bleeding. So if you know somebody who suffers from endometriosis, let them know that there are things you heard about someone saying something that, you know, they can do, treatments they can do, herbs they can take, movement, I mean, vitamins, minerals, all these different things that can help. The majority of my endo clients don't suffer the way they used to suffer or butts about that if they do the work they get the job done and a lot of times they get the job done and they get a cosmic woman baby and we love that that's exciting for all of us we all jump for joy so don't keep this information to yourself tell someone if you work in a business and there are 10 women in there at least one has endometriosis. So talk about it. Talk about it. The last thing, the last treatment that I want to go into is cold therapy. So a lot of times when we have pain and cramping, we go for heat, right? Because heat is supposed to calm it down and all of those things. And it does. But for some women, heat only makes them feel like they're on fire. And that happens a lot with endo, right? Maybe not so much if you just have, you know, like bad cramps. But if you suffer from endo, a lot of times the heat is not your friend. You don't enjoy it. It throws off all kind of other things. 
So cold is what you would resort to. I know women that take their shirts up here, lie down on the cold tile, right? And chill or try to, to numb the pain of endo. So using cold is a great, great, great way also to help with the pain, okay? Getting an ice pack, getting a Ziploc bag with just full of ice and a little bit of water and just keeping it on your abdomen, it can help. For some women, it doesn't help. For some women, it cramps them more and they're uncomfortable. So it's not for everyone. But it can really, really help. If you even want to put some on your knees, your thighs, Put some ice in your tub and just go sit in it. Again, it's not for everyone, but for some, it is everything. So that is also an option that you guys can take. That is pretty much all I have to say when it comes to endo and the treatments that can be done when it comes to fertility and endo. You don't ever want to take on endo and just take it on from a fertility aspect. You want to take on endo as to treat this and I want to get this endo from a stage two to a stage zero or from a stage three to a stage one or zero or a stage four to a stage zero. If you sit down and think about fertility, 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 you are going to get depressed. You are. It's not worth it. Use the time, use the efforts, use the energy for healing self. Loving self enough. It's not about the fertility. The fertility is a goal, yes. But don't make it be about that and that alone. Make it be about, I don't want to walk it every day I don't want to not go to that party I don't want to get fired from my job think about it like that so questions if so please send us a DM send us a whatsapp message uh, we will get to you uh, of course you guys know I'm I I'm crazy, 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 crazy busy. I have so many clients that I need to reach out to. You guys don't even understand. Um, existing clients. Uh, but we are putting things into play um, to make this, the, the situation move uh, much smoother. Um, the company has really grown like really, like really, really quickly um, in a short space of time. And it just happened. And so we're now just trying to like, you know, Get it together. So, I mean, I thank you all for your patience. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um, don't cross me off, please. Um, before the end of the week, I will be getting to every single one who has sent me a message um, or who is expecting a call from me. I will definitely, definitely be calling. No doubt about it. Um, I thank you guys so much for tuning in, as you always do on a Wednesday. We're going to start doing other days, not just Wednesdays, so look out for that. Uh, but again, thank you so much. If you guys are following um, the, if you're not following the, the Vagina Lady page, please do so. Please do so. Um, and just look out for all the things that we'll be putting out. We have a lot of things that are coming out in the future and you guys are going to be really, really excited about that. The endo webinar. Now we will be having an endo webinar. Um, we, you know, we'll be doing a little, a lot of like treatments and movement about the actual things that we can use to treat endo. Um, it will be free, so look out for that um, so that you guys can tune in. It will be online, of course, with all of this excitement that's going on with the corona. Uh, but we will be putting out information so that you guys can definitely tune in. Alrighty. Thanks again. Love and light to all of you.